What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another episode of Ramas Men's Team. Uh, pretty simple. We are a group of guys helping each other make progress towards each other's goals. If you're new to the channel, awesome and welcome. If you want to help support the channel and join our pro team, head over to ramasteam.com slash pro, where you can contribute to us on a donation basis. We also give you access to exclusive content, mastermind groups, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the team. Mr. Ray, what's up, brother? Wes, I am good. How are you? Good. I need some uh, expert uh, interior design advice. Um, just getting up a new office. I think the office looks amazing. We tore it down to the studs. We rebuilt it, so it's just a blank slate right now. Yes. How do you feel about the, I don't know if it's called brick veneer, but it's basically. Yeah. Exposed brick. Thick. Yeah, but it, it's. The bricks are like put on like a super thin brick. I don't even know if it's brick, but it, it, it looks like brick and they're on big pallets, you know, big like rectangular pallets. You kind of staple them to the wall and then yeah. you go over with like this plastery type stuff. So it, I don't think it fully looks like brick, but it 95% looks like brick. How do you feel about that? Cheesy or? Yeah, the worst. Oh, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. This right. is for an interior. It will be for the podcast room inside of the office. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, so okay, okay. it doesn't so, look like wallpaper, right? But it also, right? You would you wouldn't put a thousand dollars down and it'd be brick. No, no. But the interesting thing is that you're not. If it's the podcast room, then it is not supposed to be consumed in person, right? right. It is for the um, the visual effect on a screen. In right. which case. Um, Maybe maybe it's a great idea. Like I'm now thinking of how many podcasters have um, bricks in the back, and is this the is this the is this the scam they've been pulling on all of us that it's not yeah, actually yeah. a, oh, a historic historic building? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, guaranteed. Cool. Okay, and then then in that case, I'm all for it. All right, cool. So then I want to thank Dima. Dima had uh, had me over for the UFC fights this weekend, and they were outstanding. A um, lot of jiu-jitsu, except for the last fight. Uh, but um, big shout-out to jiu-jitsu and big shout-out to all the UFC fighters because, man, it is a war. Dude, uh, Dustin Poirier fought, and I think he fought Michael Chandler, I believe. And I don't know if you watch the UFC at all, right? But I don't. I don't have a stomach for it. I mean, I'm, you know, oh, once dude. I start doing jiu-jitsu – in December, I might be able to take an interest. Yeah, I think you would appreciate, like Tim Ferriss says, once you start to get into a certain domain, you start to appreciate the ballet for what it is. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I know this move. I know how to, it's, you, you start to dissect the individual parts rather than looking at the, the blood in this case. But right. you would have, in particular, you would have been nauseated because, oh man, I've actually never seen blood like this before. Justin mm -hmm. Poirier punches Michael Chandler in the nose, and it literally looks like his nose exploded inside. And they show it in slow motion, of course. Oh, you just see this oh, like no. water balloon of like blood, and then it <laughs> it wouldn't stop. So he's so Chandler's on top of Poirier, and uh, Ray, I'm not kidding. It looked like he was just taking a shot glass out of blood and pouring it all over his face, into his mouth. He's pushing it out of his eyeballs. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would have fainted. Yeah, he literally. I would have. I would have. I would have fainted, man. He spat out Chandler's blood from his mouth. So imagine I was bleeding into your mouth, and you. There's so much where you got to spit it out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so they were like literally swap and spit. No, no blood. So Chandler. Yes, blood. Yes, blood. Yes. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Pouring into into Poirier's mouth. And then eyeball to the point where he's got to like wipe it out of his eyes. Yeah. While he's clobbering. Oh, so, so the guy who was bleeding was still, he was still in the fight. Oh yeah. yeah. Still going he's for it. He's got some sort of nasty cut inside of his nose. And it was like, dude, it was not dripping. It was pouring. Like it was like literally, it just looked if I, if I tilted this teacup over and just like, yeah. you know. And oh, you yeah. were cheering. You were, you were like jumping up and down to cheer. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate the G the the chess match of it definitely yeah. yeah 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 awesome so anyway with that being said 
relationship. Let's talk about love. <laughs> <laughs> so Smo- actually, seamless transition, seamless transition. Yeah, we might bring Dima up on this if you're okay with it, because actually, sure. um, so Dima, actually, I'll let Dima share. You know, the reason I suggested this topic today is because it's been a while. Like we've done a lot of career stuff. We've done um, fitness. We've done, um, and it's been a while since uh, we've talked about relationships. And um, so I thought that it would be a good refresher to take. And uh, given your, um, you know, photographic memory, maybe we could do a, you know, a quick discussion of the seven. Uh, right. What is it? Um, seven keys to every successful marriage. Seven principles for making marriage work. Yes. And then then uh, the four horsemen. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. And, and so we, the reason I brought Dima up this weekend um, was because – and Dima, if you're available, feel free to hop on. Um, so he and his now fiance, Lauren, uh, Dima just got engaged uh, la- a week and a half, a week-ish. Amazing. Ago. Amazing. Yeah, and he and Lauren are going through – Gottman's eight dates amazing they swear by it they recommend it to all their uh uh, or friends and family i've done the same and ray just coincidentally you are uh you brought up uh gottman today so gottman was fresh in my mind and i don't have to go off memory i made this one pager uh for in my opinion one of the greatest relationship books of all books of all time called seven principles for making marriage work so let's do it dude yeah uh, i forgot about eight dates i went through eight dates we, we did a little bit of it together but uh even if you know your your girlfriend fiance wife husband is reluctant to do it there's a lot of self-education that can take place yes i have never encountered a female whether just in casual conversations that are there he is Hey, you know, what's up, okay. brother? Sorry, I just How you doing? came from the show. Oh, you're all good, Beast. Um, so we're just going over. We're just congratulating you for the engagement. Um, and then also, I was telling the dudes that you and Lauren are committed to going through, in fact, almost completed Gottman's eight dates. That's right. So maybe if you can, if, if you wouldn't mind riffing off of that, how instrumental has that has the eight dates been for you uh, and Lauren? Give me a few minutes. Uh, I'm just going to get my headphones. Yeah, take your time. So while we're waiting for Dima. Yeah. Um, so, Ray. Re- yeah, so some more like, um, you know, uh, it's a busy time for me in my gallery. I'm transitioning out of one exhibition into another. And like in full, um, you know, treadmill mode at her job. So like the Gottman say, the relationship and the health of the relationship can be the last can fall can fall to the last spot on the to-do list every week right and it is something that you have to water like a plant yes or else it'll wither yeah so let's this while we're waiting for dima let me bring up my powerpoint and let's see if i can share my screen here so do 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 how do i do that share screen there we go share screen Perfect. Okay. So can you guys see my yes. screen here? Okay. So if anybody wants this, let me know. I can send it out to you guys. Um, okay. So literally this is my most concise version of John Gottman's eight dates. I'll run through it really quickly. It's a one pager just to help me remember it because the book is unbelievable. It's one of my favorite books um, and one of Ray's favorite books. And I believe Dina as well. All right, so first of all, the seven principles right down here, if you can see it. I mean, enhance the size of this. Okay, so we're going from left to right here. So principle number one, enhance your love maps. Love maps is just literally knowing the landscape of your relationship. Who are your who's your spouse's best friends? Who's her, who are her family members? What is she interested in? What is what are her coworkers? Um, what does she do every day? Just like literally documenting. Uh, like if you were if you were to go on Jeopardy and they were to ask you about your lover, this this is where the love maps come in. Basically, like your love notes on this person. Um, next thing is nurturing fondness and admiration, and, and I put a little thing down here: nurturing fondness and admiration. Do, do, do. Uh, meditating on what makes you cherish your partner, and exercises thinking and talking about happy events of the past, remembering positive association about your partner. The third is turning towards each other 
which is connecting with your spouse, being there for each other uh, uh, during the minor events in each other's lives and responding favorably to one's spouse's bids for attention, affection, humor, and support. (laughs) Bids for attention and connection are super big in Gottman's work. Bid meaning like, you know, if Ray and Sarah get into a little tiff, Ray tries to make a little joke, does Sarah attend to that bid for connection? Because that joke is not just a joke. It is a, hey, Sarah, I'm sorry, but I'm too ashamed to say it right now. I'm just looking for a little bit of connection. Do you, you know, reciprocate that sort of thing? Um, Number four, accepting influence. So accepting influence means sharing power, making one's spouse a partner in one's decision making by taking their opinions and feeling into account. Um, I am horrible at this. Uh, It is something that I do think is very important, though. Uh, Number five, solving solvable problems. So Gottman's model for conflict resolution involves a softening startup, leading off the discussion without criticism or contempt, making a straightforward comment or about a concern and expressing one's need in a positive fashion, learning and making to, uh, I'm sorry, learning to make and receive repair attempts, uh, meaning statements or actions that prevent negativity from escalating out of control efforts the couple makes to de-escalate the tension during a t- touchy discussion, soothing oneself and one's partner, compromising and being tolerant of each other's faults. Number six is overcoming gridlock. Gridlock occurs when a conflict make one makes one feel rejected. Uh, they keep talking about it, but make no headway. They become entrenched in their positions and are unwilling to budge. They discuss the subject, end up feeling more frustrated. Just quick summary on this. This is where like, Agree to disagree. Uh, you know, you know, this person's a Republican. This person's a Democrat. You're never going to get past that. Let's just say. So that is, it's how do you over overcome gridlock? So getting to the point where you can just respectfully agree to disagree. Um, and then number six is creating a. Sh- I'm sorry, number seven is creating a shared meaning, a spiritual dimension to mar- to marriage about creating an inner life together, a culture rich with symbols and rituals and on appreciation for the spouse's roles and goals that link them. So that's a good summary, a uh, quick little sprint through Gottman's uh, seven. So I'll open it up to the boys here. Guys, what do you think? It's, you know, it's funny. These are things that are so obvious when you read them, but they're so hard or unnatural um, in our day-to-day um, lives, you know, like overcoming gridlock. It's just a lot easier to slam the door (laughs) and walk away. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then also like everything, you know, you know, the expression you use Wes, where like you got to distinguish between what's urgent and what's urgent and important. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there's a version of that. I feel like in relationships where, um, distinguishing between solvable problems and gridlocks, gridlock, is an important skill because everything will feel like gridlock in an emotional argument. Right. You know, like when we, uh, when we get defensive and we don't want to give up our side, we just want to punch back. Yep, exactly. So, and I wonder if there's a space for a transition, like knowing that, okay, this could temporarily be put into gridlock. Like, we, we're tried working on it for 45 minutes here. Let's respectfully agree to disagree. We love each other. Let's put it over in the parking lot, gridlock parking lot for right now. And we will figure it out at a later date. Something like that. I wonder if there's space for that. Oh, well, Ray, I think you're trying to talk, but you were on. Yeah, 100%. Uh, we're going to put we're gonna put it in the parking lot for now. Right? Parking lot yep. for now. Yep. And then Dima, what are your thoughts? And for some reason, I'm getting feedback from somebody. Um, I think it's be, Dima's headphones, perhaps. Might be Dima. Yeah, Dima might be your headphones. But we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Um, yeah. So Dima, if you don't mind commenting on your eight dates exercises so far, and just so everybody knows, John Gottman also wrote wrote the book Eight Dates, which is basically the workbook version, the action item version of Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. Yeah, and this is actually our uh, next book. What do we want to do? Um, yep. Yeah, seven principles. Cool. Re- really love it. Like uh, this, like eight dates book, pretty pretty much recommends everybody. 
And then actually, uh, yesterday we had our fifth day, like about family, like, uh, you know, talking about like kids and stuff. And uh, I like this book just because you can ask questions you probably wouldn't ask, like uh, it wouldn't come to your mind, you know, um, to ask. And um, it helps you to be more aware about like your needs, like about your past, about your partner's past. So, yeah, I and definitely, you know, um, I think it is important to have quality time and like in daily routine, when you like staying home, you like busy with you with your stuff and uh, you kind of like sometimes you forget about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a good reminder that you always need quality time. You always need to prioritize your relationship, like at least, you know, once in a while, go for a date and. Because for me, you know, this book helped me and helped me understand that, like we have like different opinion about quality time, right? Like in the morning, like when we make coffee, like before the gym, we have like a small conversation. For me, it was quality time. For her, like it's not right. So mm -hmm. and um, that's like you know, and like for me, when she's like saying like, hey, I, like we never have quality time, and I was like, what do you mean? Like every morning, like we're drinking coffee together, you know, we talk, but she wants something more and you know that helps me like see that and i make an effort to um well you make an effort in the beginning and then become your ha habit you know mm -hmm. so um yeah i'm dude <clears throat> well if you can if you don't mind i'm gonna riff off of some of that uh that you're highlighting a phenomenal point which is i think in any human interaction the currencies are often not the same. So I'm using the US dollar, you're Ray's using whatever the heck Canadians use, which I'm pretty sure is a, is a whole bunch of coins. I remember being working in Canada, just like my freaking pants would always fall down because I had so many fucking coins in my pocket. What, what What's the currency in Canada? It's a Canadian dollar, but um, the Canadian $1 coin has a loon on it. So it's called a loony. Uh-huh. And yeah, then the, yeah, yeah, that the, was it. That was the thing I was trying to think. The of. two dollar coin has is called a toonie. Yeah, it's very annoying. I just remember so many fucking coins being in my pocket in Canada. Loonies and toonies. It's that's right, dude. And going to uh, Tim Hortons. I feel like Tim Hortons yes. is like every on every freaking corner there. Yeah. Anyway, I. Jim, so you, you've defined our whole you've defined our whole history <laughs> yeah. are you happy Wes you've defined our whole history in one sentence yeah. so, well, so but, um, now what Dima what Dima's talking about uh, makes me think of the first um item which is love map love notes you know where uh Dima thinks that he's engaging in quality time with the coffee over breakfast or in the morning but that doesn't qualify as coffee quality time for her for his partner well and, and um, that's the point oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the dialogue, yeah. So the dialogue between the two, the two people in the relationship helps to clarify that, right? Like yeah. Yeah. in my, in my relationship, foot rubs and like kind of personal attention is love language. Um, when I do my act of love and I send out my check in my daily check-in by text to all my, my friends, um, she said she would, she would like to be included in that. Right. So, um, an act got, of love, why not, too. why not, why not include your life partner in your act of love? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, it, it was, it's, it was illuminating for me that, uh, you know, if she's, if she stubs her toe and I hear Al from the kitchen, I'm supposed to run in there and say, <laughs> are you okay? Are you okay? I know she's okay. Right. Right. But it's the love map, the love notes, the love language is that check in. That checking yeah. out, that checking in. So and I, it didn't come that, like you said, Dima, it didn't come naturally. Um, it's not my love language, I don't think, but it's the, the, the conversation helped illuminate that. That's phenomenal because number one, getting on the same page with your partner, what is the currency? Okay, so for Lauren, it's not coffee and a, and a conversation in the morning. For Dima, it is. So going through those exercises and literally to to what I would say the tedious detail of saying, Hey partner, tell me in this category of quality time, what is your currency? And then it's my job as a partner to do that, to, to pay her that currency. Um, so that's phenomenal. Dima, if you don't mind me sharing, if it's okay, what would be Lauren's example 
uh, and how do you how do you bake that into the schedule of doing it of quality time? Uh, well, so for her, it's literally like actual like going out like somewhere, right? Like uh, hmm. just some it, it and uh, she doesn't mean like it should be like something really fancy or expensive. Just like the fact that we are living in the house, like for like some picnic or like restaurant or whatever. And you know what? So uh, before, like a few months ago, we're we're talking about the what is a two 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 rule? Like when you like when you go out twice a week uh, at one time in a few weeks, and then you go like out of town one time in a few months, and then hmm. you go like do like international travel like once in like six months, or something like that. So I literally I put uh, reminders in my uh, calendar. Okay, so it's been like two weeks, so we need to go somewhere, right? Yep. And again, in the beginning, this is how you form the habit. And then in the beginning, you kind of like, oh, damn, like I need to like, you know, like buy a ticket somewhere, like we'll go like concert, movie, whatever. And then it's like, uh, it become like part of you because uh, like I grew up in the family. My dad never took my mom out because like we were poor, right? So we all like, but uh, to be fair, he always made an effort to like take us like for a picnic, let's say. So we mm. just like make food. But like for me, I didn't see it from that perspective. But now, uh, and it, it was not in me kind of like I always like uh, really like camping. So I like took her a lot of camping stuff. But like, well, camping and, you know, like going out somewhere like a really nice place with like ni nice uh, ambience. It's like different. So right now I feel like I'm much better at it just because i i am aware about it and yeah at first i had to had like reminders but now i'm just like okay yeah like do you want to like uh go somewhere and like uh getting back to that book helps a lot like when you mm -hmm. need to like plan your day because uh we're both passionate about work and we talk a lot about work but it's good just like go somewhere and talk about something else not work so right. um yeah. So, um, well, yeah. And from my experience, it also helps to not only talk about different topics, but then if you're not exactly an expert in those topics, having a guide to help you navigate that conversation. Like that's why I think the book's so great. Hey, yeah. here's the topic to talk about. Here's a bunch of different questions and ideas and go. That just gives you so much more raw material to be able to, to, to riff off of with your partner. Yeah. And even like simple questions. So like in the, the family chapter, there's a question like, do you actually want to have kids? Right. And I, I was surprised when um, one of my friends, they got married and they never talked about it. It's such a simple, like a big question. And, th and then they actually divorced because the guy wanted kids and the, the girl didn't. So Whoa. So, like, I don't know, like, how can, like, you not talk about this type of stuff before marriage, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's because society doesn't necessarily teach us. Yeah. You know, like, if you didn't read this book or if I didn't read this book and Ray didn't read this book, where would we have learned it? Ideally from our parents, but I would say 95% of us, like, not our parents are not a great source of the eternal knowledge and best knowledge of a relationship. Right. And then earlier on, I said um, the relationship stuff can fall down to the bottom of the priority list every week. Having children, again, it's so abstract whether or not to have children, right? Like it doesn't, right? It doesn't, like the rent comes monthly, you know, meals come three times a day, other plans, et cetera, right? Like that, that can, again, that is like one of the things that can definitely fall to the bottom of the priority list and stay there, right? Because it's long-term things. Um, in the other chapter on dreams, right, it's the same thing where um, they, they have exercises to help you flesh out what are your dreams, what are your spouse's dreams, what are the dreams you have in common, and then what are the dreams that are um, in conflict or separate from each other, right? Mm -hmm. And and it doesn't have to result in divorce. I mean, that's – I it's not necessarily a bad thing if that relationship you just mentioned ended in divorce, right? Because like, rather than him feeling unhappy that he wasn't able to have a family. Um, but like in the dreams thing, um, John and Julie Gottman, they figure out w what are the, what are the dreams they have in common? What their dreams are different. 
and they give each other the space to create those. Yeah. yeah. And to, for some of the guys, pursue those. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, and for some of the guys listening to this, you maybe don't have a girlfriend or you don't have a, a wife or fiance, et cetera. I also think this book, Eight Dates, can be used as almost a prerequisite database of knowledge for yourself. Like literally, even if you're single right now, go and read the book and write down the exercises and answer those exercises because then that's your value system. Okay, do you want a family? What what does trust and commitment mean to you? How do you like to handle your fa- your your finances? All of these things. If you don't, if you're not grounded in your value system each, inside of each one of those categories, then you're most likely going to meet just the next hot girl. And regardless of her value system in there, there's no flag in the ground. You could go off for the next three years and date somebody that's not that's not a good wor- workable long term spouse for you. What's ideal family for you guys? <clears throat> Ray, uh, okay, okay, okay. We all, we both took a big deep breath right there. Uh, you know, growing up, I wanted. I was from a big chaotic family, and so that was my definition of what a family is. Right, a lot of chaos, a lot of instability. Bills not getting paid, electricity getting shut off. Uh, but still, that was the imprinted on me as that. What's what? That's what a family looks like. I came from a blended family, but was an only child, but had a hybrid of like big family, small family. We only have one right now. And the upside of that is I'm able to give the, uh, all my love and attention, right? Like my parents, my mom and dad, they were supposed to give the spouse love. And then the five kids love and like, so I was supposed to get one fifth of my parents love. That was the portion assigned to the kids. Not very much. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm able to, I'm able to give all that love and support to Thea when I'm on my, when I'm at my best, which isn't every day. But uh, so long story short, big family was my idea of a happy family. But uh, Sarah, Thea fills my heart with so much love that it's an, it, it, it is enough. Mm. Yeah, well, that so, makes sense. So, like, originally you wanted, like, more kids, right? Okay. Yeah. And then on my side, I was raised as a so single child, single parent, um, which comes with its all, you know, pros and cons. I would say for me, I would want ideally two children. And I'm not going to lie, part like, I would like those to be males, two boys. Um not for any other reason than I kind of want to right the wrongs of my father, if that makes sense. So to, to be able to impart wisdom on a young male. Um, and the reason I don't want more than two is because almost what Ray is saying, where like, um, I don't want my d- attention to be diverted and diluted so much to the point where they're just getting partial messages from me, mm-hmm. you know, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, so that would be an ideal situation for me. And I would say probably in age, enough distance, but also enough closeness in age to where they can kind of grow up together, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I wouldn't be opposed. I would not want twins only because I can't imagine the chaos that comes with one baby and then having two. So probably some distance there. And then also just for the mother, like I can't imagine what it's like. My grandmother, great grandmother had 11 children. So, and a lot of them just like back to back to back, dude, that's like an assembly line, like, you know, assembly line plus like bull in a China shop. I don't know why, but that's just like the, the visual that I get, like what that does to the human anatomy. And uh, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. I think that, um, Wes, we just, we just both riffed on how we grow up, how that informs our ideas of what family is. Right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, my artist that I'm currently showing at the gallery, just starting um, this week. Arlene from Mexico, her grandfather, um, first wife died, second wife died, third wife. Amongst the three wives, 35 children. 35. 30. You're bragging literally. with your 11. Literally. You're bragging with your 11, Wes. 35 children. That's a king. That is a king right there. Okay. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a king. I don't know if you want to, guys, you want to put in the chat how you say king in Spanish. I'm not sure, but. Um, so, so, okay. So just wanted to humble you a little bit, Wes, 
Dima, tell us about your upbringing in, in the same context. Give us, a, give us an idea of your upbringing and how that informs how many kids you want, if you've already formulated this information. You mentioned you grew up in poverty. Does that impact your ability, does, like, desire to provide for a family? Um, so, yeah, like, um, I definitely felt like when I was like growing up, I asked my parents to like, hey, can we have like more like, you know, kids? <laughs> Uh, as for like yeah brother or sister um and uh like for me i do want to have yeah like more than one like ideally like two or three kids and but again it's going to depend on the economic right like uh if you because you want to do the best for your kids and that's why you need to think right now, like ahead. So, and that's why, and like, I'm really concentrated on work right now, just because I do want to provide, you know, for my family and for my kids. I don't want them to grow in poverty. And because of that, I feel like I have to work right now and have money because, listen, so here, like in the United States, it's just me, right? I don't have my family. So that means when we're going to have kids, we we're not going to have a lot of people to help with kids so like um and uh, because of that and to maintain your relationship right we need like quality time but like if you have a kid like it's hard to like make time for yourself unless if you have money to like pay for someone looking for it like looking uh like watching your kid so um yeah I, I guess that's my like current situation like that's what like i'm thinking right now and i do want to have yeah like uh ideally yeah like like boy and girl um i do yeah i do want to have a girl uh too just because <laughs> like you know um i actually i uh sometimes i go to inspiration point just like it's like really nice neighborhood and i like walk around and I saw uh, like one morning, like I think it was like six in the morning or something. So there was a dad with with uh, like little girl, like maybe like four years old. And he was like doing her like her hair. And like, I don't know, mom probably just like we're tired and sleeping. or I don't know. But it was like so cute. They were like, you know, in like one of these like nice houses, like outside. And, uh, you know, that's how I like picture um you know my time with like my kids too and like so yesterday uh when we had a conversation about kids that's what i said too that i do want to have like whenever we have kids i do want to have like time together but also like time separate like with kids right like you take your like uh like girl to a date right like eat ice cream and you like talk about it or you take your like uh like boy to um you know some like other activities and you just like hanging out like separate too because that's how you can uh, share your values and mm -hmm. kind of you know like have like that like meaningful conversation conversations with them mm -hmm. um yeah so. can i comment on a few things on there sure so if you, if you don't mind so he, he, so let's add in some texture here so dima can you give the guys a quick little note about inspiration point uh, you, Where's it, the location? Yeah, it's like by by the ocean, and yeah. uh, it's it's a rich neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. So so that's what I was gonna say. So when we when we get into this, and this is why I love having this conversation with men, and being with you guys, literally. So what Demo was saying is, hey, I want to be able to make money to support my family. Well, if you look at poverty, it's uh, I, I believe it, Jordan Peterson talks about this. It's it's the Gini coefficient, I believe, which is. It's not poverty that creates unhappiness. It is relative poverty that creates unhappiness. So if you, once you start like adding to the list of your needs of a family. So for instance, where Dima is saying is out here in Orange County, California, that inspiration point that he kind of like just glossed over is one of the wealthiest places in the entire country. Um, and when he says it's a nice house, Dima, what do you think that house is probably worth? Well, at least five million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's at minimum, you know, like yeah. at absolute minimum. Yeah. And what I want the men on this uh, cast to learn is that, like, if you want to provide a stable and let's say optimal situation for your kids, it whatever that means to you, know that 
what Dima is saying, like, let's just say he wants his kids to go to Irvine School District, which is one of the best school districts, public school districts in the country. Well, and let's assume that he doesn't want his kids to feel poor in that group because, again, it's relative poverty that matters. I'm assuming he doesn't just want to to itch, inch his way by in that category to be the poorest family in that group, even though as a father, that's exactly what he should be aiming to do. How can I get my kids into one of the best school districts in the country? But now you have to compete at such a high level. Like to get a house in Irvine, it's easily a minimum a million bucks. Minimum, like absolute minimum. That that is a that is a teardown house for it. Now, if you're gonna get an apartment, well, guess what? Now you're the father who has, you know, and, and mother who has the apartment of the friend group. The kids like this is what me I was growing up with. Oftentimes I didn't want to I didn't want to take friends to my apartment because we had an apartment, but then eventually I learned to love it. But anyway, that's the point. So as a father, your job, in my opinion, is to to be a primary breadwinner of the household. Now, I know Lauren, she's a killer, like so it's the same deal. But can we as men adopt the responsibility of earning the resources for our family? And that's a very hard conversation to have, but it's a very real conversation to have. So Dima, let me throw that back to you. Does that responsibility weigh on you? And what is the plan to have that happen for your family? Um, yeah, so that's a good question. Um, just to be uh, clear, that's my target. But also, I, you know, I want to enjoy my life. I don't want to be stressed about it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's kind of, I think it should go a little bit like separate emotionally, just because you know, uh, it's good to have this like mindset, but also you have to understand that there's like always like some difficulties. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, what's it? The, uh, Stockholm paradox. Like when you like believe in like bright future, but also you face all like difficulties like, uh, at mm -hmm. the moment. So, um, for me, I know that I have to be more responsible. I have to be more disciplined to get it. I have to like change my mentality. I have to work in myself to like be there. And even like, because I start a little bit later, I know that I have to work harder, right? So I need to, um, well, make my like business. I need to, um, and that's what I'm doing right now. I kind of like, uh, everything is ready now. I'm going to look for like clients for like, I'm, uh, I'm going to run like marketing agency, like for like um, paid search ads, because I, um, you know, I'm like working in this industry and I have like big experience and, uh, you know, proof of results. So I do believe that I can help like all the businesses to grow. And, um, and this is where I'm going to start uh, before. I had a lot of thinking about it, like, okay, what I'm going to do, like step by step. And as a result, I didn't make any actions. Right. Mm -hmm. But as, uh, Martin, it was a Martin Luther King said, just, you don't need to see the whole stairway, just like do a first step. And mm -hmm. so that's where I am right now. I did my first step. I did like actual, uh, step towards my future and yeah, I'm just going to work on that. Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know if I answer your question. No, absolutely. It's it's forward progress. Ray, what are your thoughts on this particular topic? It's it's tough, man, because um, it uh, it is a call to action. You know, it's a call to do a little bit more each day, you know, to try and just like really rattle the gas tank and just squeeze a couple more drops out. And yes, uh, the primary breadwinner status is ideal. Um, I'm not there. It is a collaborative household currently, but um, yeah, it's a call to action. It's something I need to work on. Yeah, no, hell yeah. And I, I think it's one of the biggest, uh, I look at it as an honor and I, I assume you guys do too, right? Like I think a lot of guys can get overwhelmed by it and almost argue against it, but it's like, we were gifted testosterone, which is a unidimensional focusing forward progress hormone. What are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
also at, at the same time, uh, again, just want to, you know, like love a little bit more uh, con tech contested. So, um, you know, it's like about journey. It's not about like destination, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like who you become. And also like to not like get depressed because you cannot compare yourself to a, like Elon Musk, for example, mm -hmm. right? Like it's like completely different like realities. Mm -hmm. But all like... Um, we, we do have these targets, but life, you know, uh, is not always like giving what we want. So we need to like fight for it. And uh, you, I think you just need to like have this like peace of mind when like if like something not going like that way, do not lose your passion. Just like keep going. And also like at the same time, enjoy the current moment. Don't live in the future. Don't live in the past have plans for future don't like don't like judge yourself like if you know something is not going the way how it is like all what you can do is just like be consistent be disciplined be a man of the house and yeah just you know go for it and uh, you know like uh, if let's say this like house is for front five million i know it is like really ambitious goal right but i'm not you know like depressed right now that i don't have it you know and uh i still want to enjoy my like age my this this like period of time when like lauren and i like young and we like don't have kids and we're just like enjoying our lives mm -hmm. um, i do think about it like it's in my mind but it's like on that like on the background that from like meaning that like okay dude i need you i need to work like you have like UFC night like uh, like a few days ago. Okay, yeah, like sometimes you need to relax, but now like you have to grind. So oh, yeah, uh, no, I think you're exactly right. Enjoying enjoying the present and also building for the future. Uh, there's no doubt, and that's that's the hardest yeah. that's the hardest game that you could possibly play. Not getting stuck in any one of those time dimensions, whether it be the past, the present, or the future. Like, how do you create the proper ratio? You know, for sure. Ray, what are your thoughts on that, dude? Yeah, so uh, just listening to what Dima was saying, um, you know, when you said be the primary breadwinner, like my first ex my first emotion experience was insecurity. Like, uh oh, yeah. I'm not that. But um, like Dima said, or to paraphrase Dima, or to put it in my own words, success is a lifelong process, right? Success isn't a endpoint. Or right, it, it's it's not a data point; it's a right. lifelong process. And so, um, being on the path of progress yeah. and working towards the being the solo breadwinner in the family is all I can do. Yeah, there's like if we switch, if if I just forbid from working, that's not going to help our family situation. <laughs> right, right, right. But the, the being on the path of progress is um, which I am on. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I don't want anybody to get turned off by what I said. And I actually, funny enough, I don't, I don't believe that necessarily a man has to be the primary breadwinner. So let me edit that. I do believe that for a lot of us, let's say traditional masculinists, um, being a sufficient breadwinner is important. Knowing that you can go and hunt for your family. God forbid something happens to your spouse, or or you want to have another child, and where 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 the burden of hunting will be pay, placed solely on you, can you sufficiently pull in capital? That That is important to me if you if people want to adopt that, but like that is what I focus on. How can I help my family survive? And my number one gift in that genre is bringing in money. And which, by the way, I think is one of the most noble and challenging things a man can do. Because yeah, it is fucking hard. It is hard, but also like for for everybody is like different targets you know like mm -hmm. um some people just want to be like a good father father right yep. so like do you remember uh john from like ufc fight they, they have really lovely family they they brought two kids um yep. and so the mom is more like she's like more active and like career like orientated but john he's like he's earning he's like breadwinner like for the family right now like he's like in it he earns like all money but he like, I feel like his passion is kids, right? And mm -hmm. when we talk about it, he actually, he was like thinking to open like a kindergarten. Like, uh, oh, wow. just, 
yeah, be, just because like he's passion kids, you know, like he wants to be a really good father and he is, he's like the best fa father I know, uh, in person. And, awesome. um, he's like daughter, like, so like nice and cute and such an like nice behavior. So my point is like, everybody needs different things. And I don't mm -hmm. think we should like look at someone else and like, think, oh, like, that's the standard of the society so i feel lack of something because i don't have it no it's just because like you need different things and i, I think the most important thing to understand what you need and uh, mm -hmm. persevere it that's it it's, absolutely yeah and, and what i would add to that and there's there's shades of gray inside of that conversation because it's like be real careful on whether or not you're defining that thing of like you you want to be the father that stays home because you're really passionate about that, which is awesome, versus you don't want to go out there and be the warrior that it really takes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I actually know several guys like that. They're not willing. They're scared of the of the the gauntlet of the marketplace, and they're kind of hiding over here. Now, if they're not doing that and they are really are passionate, hell yeah! Like I fully support that as long as you're thinking through, well, these kids got to eat, who's going to feed them, you know, yes. sort of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, and so to, to, to wrap it up, um, uh, Dima, what do you think the eight dates, how do you, how do you think in like a couple of sentences, how do you think the eight dates has benefited your relationship? Um, I feel more open and I feel more aware about myself and about my partner. I, I, I think I know her better and actually it seed really good trend having a date and like, and just like go out and talk about something, not, you know, from your like regular, like circle of things you do every day. And, I was like, I think like first few days I was so impressed. So I made a decision for myself to do it for the rest of my life. That's kind of like, you know, like it, it's commitment right now to me. I, I, I discovered like, I, because before I like, we went out, but I kind of like, I didn't see the, like why we do that because like, why, <laughs> we, like why we go out if you can eat home, right? Right. And then I think it was like fourth date and she was like, OK, let's let's like uh, not like go somewhere, but let's stay home. And I was like, no, let's go out because it's you change the environment. Mm -hmm. You think differently and you kind of I don't know, it feels different. And mm -hmm. it was like really like eye opening to me. And right now, sometimes even like uh, like we just like, OK, let's like we need to like talk about something. Sure. Yeah. Let's go out. And talk because that's kind of the good um pattern like because like sometimes you come back home you're just like oh i feel tired look right yep. and home like when you when you home you um your mindset in this like home st uh, state kind of like because you like do whatever you know like this walls familiar to you and mm -hmm. that's kind of how you behave here but when you go out you change the environment you kind of like see things from different perspective and that was like really eyes opening to me and for sure i'm committed to do that you know i'm, I'm sure i'm going to do this book again like maybe like in a year or two yep and that and then we're just going to continue with that like that all the suggestions you have because you know it is important and there's like i think gutman said there's like two-thirds of marriages like uh didn't work like don't work mm -hmm just because like people you know not aware about stuff and we all know like these people who like has families but you never hear them like talking about like uh, in the like, important stuff they kind of like go with the flow which is absolutely not good thing to do like uh, because you always need to work that's kind of like what i learned from this book and awesome. just like from self-development like yeah yeah yeah, I agree. I agree. That word self-development, like what I, what I take away today anyway, from this book is that, um, the self-development, like the knowledge of self that came out of this, being able to understand what I want in family, in sex, in dreams, you know, and what my partner wants in those categories and that it's okay that there are differences. 
Yeah. Right. And it's, it does, it, it doesn't require like a summit negotiation to get everyone to agree to everything, right. That it's healthy to have the, the right kind of conflict. It's, and then it's healthy to pursue some dreams individually and some dreams together. So that, yes. that was my takeaway. And then Wes, any, any um, final thoughts? Yeah, the biggest thing that jumps out to me is when Dima says that Gottman says that two thirds of marriages don't work. My best guess is like most other things, those marriages don't work because they are not working the marriage. Like they're not doing the work that requires to grow the entity. It's no different in business. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this conversation is a good reminder to me of like keep on developing my family Bible, my relationship Bible, um, and. Uh, Put it on, put a relationship on a calendar to where we can execute the things in the currency that we agree to with our partners. So, dudes, thank you guys so much. Dima, thank you for having us over. Um, Ray, thank you guys. Love you guys. Talk to you soon and uh, see you on Friday. All right. Thank you guys. That is.